So um, communication over network, unless strongly encrypted, is never just between two parties. So what happens here is, and I think encryption is part of the lectures, has been or will be. Um, at least it's when I do it. Um, so the point is, um, you have text messages on Facebook. Um, private messages, who's getting them? <laughs> right? Of course, uh, hopefully the recipient, but also Facebook is storing them forever, and these are the private messages, right? So it's not encrypted. So then the next point is, they go, let's say, from your Verizon cell phone to Facebook. That means Verizon can read them. Every hop between you know, uh, Verizon and Facebook can read them, and they can store them if you want. If you send a message, anyone, unencrypted, from SFO airport Wi-Fi, pretty much SFO, everybody at the airport can read it if they wanted to, right? So that's important to know. Unless you do it strongly encryptedly, everybody can listen to it. Really, this is how the internet works. The other thing, by the way, is use strong passwords. Keep them private. If you go to our teaching privacy website, we're going to put up a new video up. And I think it wasn't called Bear. It was one of these TV shows. And they were basically just saying, oh, what's your typical password? And I, I see, do you see it? Yeah, what's your typical password? And she said, oh, it's my cat's name and my birth year. And then they're chatting a little bit, and oh, you have a cute cat, what's your cat's name? <laughs> and then she gave out her cat's name. And then after a while, and you know, you look so young, when are you born? Oh yeah, 1978. It's like, oh, okay. So and then they had the password. Um, so uh, A, use strong passwords and keep them private. So strong passwords are not necessarily passwords that have all these super special characters, by the way. Strong passwords are usually passwords, the way I generate passwords is, you take a password, uh, you take a sentence, right? For example, um, I don't know. I, get, oh, I don't give you an example because that would make it insecure. Take a sentence that has about eight words, or eight to 12 words, and then you take the first, um, the first letter of, of, uh, of each of the words in the sentence and make this your password. And you can also make something like nouns are, are maybe capitalized and everything else not, and that's actually pretty bad hard to crack and pretty easy to remember. Uh, despite like, you know, stuff like, uh, you know, dollar sign, person sign, T dot six ampersand, whatever, right? Really nobody can remember that and that makes it less secure. Um, also, again, computers are fast enough, use encryption whenever you can. HTTPS, if there's an option, there's no reason not to use it. Um, and also, if it's not encrypted, just basically assume it's public and somebody will listen in. It's just the truth. Um, so what about Yik Yak? Yes, you know, you're kind of anonymous, but Yik Yak knows who you are. But then again, the message is completely public anyways. Um, but you know, even your transmission to them is public and so on. What about Dropbox? Yeah, if you don't encrypt, your files are there, completely unencrypted. Uh, what about Google Drive? Yeah, they don't encrypt, so it's all there. Um, people can read it. So um, yes, it's, it's what it is. Um, yeah, and that's why is this a problem? Well, because sharing information over a network means you give up control over that information forever. Um, so there's the share with care video. Let's see if we can play that. <laughs> this is the high schooler version. <laughs> but um, the point is, uh, when, you, um, when you do information uh, when you share information, like, you know, man, many people have a best friend, which is a good thing, right? Why you share maybe everything, all your secrets to your best friend? Why do you do this? Well, because you trust them, right? So when your best friend is Facebook, that's bad because, <laughs> you know, everybody can read it, it's stored forever, and so on, right? So the idea of a best friend is, yeah, your best friend could still betray you, but maybe you just trust that, you know, he or she doesn't. And that's the point. The internet is not trustworthy. It will betray you, right? So this is how you have to think about that. Um, so in general, though, in, in reality, whenever you give somebody information, they might pass it on, whether or not you, know, you like it, right? Whether or you like it or not. So, and then here's the other thing. Also, you might say, OK, oh, God, I posted this thing five years ago. And fortunately, I can't find it. Yeah, true. But the problem is just because something can't be found today doesn't mean it can't be found tomorrow. The problem here is, and I, ca I can show you another example, the problem here is that search engines get better. Um, Google is crawling every second. You know, as I speak, they have added, they add like 10,000 of websites. 
um, and what's called the deep web, which is basically the web that um, is not uh, indexed by search engines. You can't really rely on that. It's just basically they might change that. And also, information that is not on the internet yet might just become available, right? So there's this open uh, data initiative from the government where they basically scan in documents and make them available, right? So now all stuff is on there. Um, and the other thing that we, we did is, you know, um, uh, an experiment where we try to basically match f Flickr videos uh, based on the audio track. And so basically the idea was, so if you're on a dating site where you think you're anonymous and uh, you post a video of yourself but you blur your face and everything, fine, but the problem is your audio track will still give you away. Um, and we, we actually did this experiment. It's kind of like once you post more than 10 videos, you can all correlate them all, right? And I just don't have time to go into this experiment. Um, so there is this thing that you definitely should Google yourself regularly and actively monitor, monitor your information footprint. And also, there will be tools for that will most likely become available at some point. So that basically, people see that this becomes an issue, and now there are companies like Reputation Defender and so on. So to make this a little more interesting, I can, I can do an experiment here. And I, as I said, this lecture might be embarrassing, so let's do that. So when I ask this question, who's on Tinder? Nobody will probably raise their hand, right? Do you know, but I won't do it, that I can go into Facebook and do the search People who, who go to UC Berkeley, or my, I might even be able to say age group, you know, uh, 19 to 22, uh, and play Tinder. And you'll get the list of people who are on Tinder, right? So uh, I could do this in the lecture, and you don't, you know, but while you're too embarrassed to raise your hand, you know, you can just do this search. And so this is the point that I'm making. The point is, you have to actively monitor information footprint. If you basically, like Eric Schmidt said, if you don't think it's a good idea, don't do it, right? So you have to stand up for what you do online because people will find it out anyway. And this is the problem is, just because it can't be found today, it can't be found tomorrow. Just because you think it can't be found doesn't mean it can't be found, right? <laughs>